Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Today, we're gonna to be talking about water because moisture is the essence of wetness and wetness is the essence of beauty. If you can name what that movie comes from, comment it down below if you don't know what movie that comes from. Check it out in the comments down below, but really, today we're talking about water because water is an essential element of life, you need it to survive, you need it to clean, oftentimes you need it to cook with, so it's pretty important. So I'm gonna be talking for a little bit, I'm gonna be showing some water type gear, I'm gonna be showing some stuff that I use, I'm gonna be giving some recommendations, but let's just talk about water for a little bit, especially as it pertains to everything that's going on right now. So, I hope you guys are holding up all right during this stay at home, shelter in place, depending on where you are in the world. The US is pretty locked down, especially here in Colorado, but some places are even worse. So, hope you're doing all right at home with the kids, homeschooling and not going out. If you got laid off, I'm really sorry, that, that sucks. And I hope things will get back to normal soon. But we're gonna talk about water. So water, you, uh, obviously, you, you drink water, you use it to clean and use it to cook. Yes, yeah, so there's, there's some obvious uses of water. Um, but what people don't really think about is they just turn on their faucet and water just comes. It just, you turn it on and, it, and it's there. It's, it's magically there. And it's really kind of a miracle what goes on behind the scenes to purify it and water treatment facilities and how to pump it into the, the towers or pump it into your home or whatever, how it still oftentimes works even when the power goes out. But it's not magic and it's not a miracle. A lot goes into it uh, and a lot of it, most of it is reliant on the grid and the grid is very fragile. So you could lose water at any time, not saying you will, not trying to freak you out, but you could. If anything, this whole pandemic and all the stuff that's come from it has opened a lot of people's eyes to preparedness, to a lot, a lot of them, their lack of preparedness. So one thing that hasn't even happened during this whole thing is I don't really think there's been mass grid down, water shortages, any of that thing. Fortunately, uh, our country has been hanging on in that regard, but it won't take much for the grid to become, you know, faulty or spotty or whatever, which could mean that you don't have water. So what today, today I'm talking about some water storage, some water purification, some little pieces of gear or kit that you might want to use or some stuff that you might have around the house that you never really thought of, but you're like, well, I could use that if I really needed to. So let's go outside real quick and I'm going to show you a few things that you can use to harvest water naturally that most people have access to. So we are outside right now. This is called a barrel. It is a dedicated rain barrel, a device that is actually designed and built specifically to harvest rainwater. The rainwater comes through the gutter, has a little pre-filter screen, mesh screen here to kind of filter out leaves and whatnot, keep bugs out, and then has a flat back as it's designed to go against a wall. And then it has a little vent in case it overflows. You can hook that to somewhere nicer. You can tap into these little guys if you want to fill up um, different rain barrels, if you want to put a couple of them side by side, or this is just overflow as well. And then it has a spigot down below to where you can actually get the water. Some quick tips with rain collection. Obviously, you gotta hook it into a gutter that gets rainwater from your roof. Uh, and then usually you wanna elevate these on bricks or something because elevation equals pressure. So if your hose is above the rain barrel, this thing isn't pressurized, it won't work. So your hose needs to be below. Obviously, you can always get water out of the spigot if you're just trying to fill up a bucket, but Pro tip is to put it up on some bricks or something so it gets a little elevation. If you have a higher end of your house, I would put it at that end and if your garden is down lower, then you can water your plants from rainwater. A lot of plants actually like that. But for our uses, we can use it to easily and naturally harvest water from our gutter, from our roof system. You can jerry-rig a gutter if you don't have any in a pinch, but we won't dive too far into that. This is just a great way to have something on hand that means you will be able to have water. 
Obviously, the success of a rain barrel will vary greatly <laughs> depending on what kind of climate you live in and how much it's raining. But something nice that you can have some practical uses, especially if you're into gardening or whatever. Legality ranges from state to state. Believe it or not, it is not actually legal to collect rainwater in every state. And a lot of states have limits on how much you can collect, yada, yada, yada. You're going to have to do your own research there. But it's not illegal to own a rain barrel. So <laughs> would be worth buying because grid down scenario, I'm sure you're not gonna get troubled too much by having a rain barrel to collect water. The water you collect is rainwater coming from your roof. So chances are you're probably not gonna wanna drink it straight. You're gonna wanna filter it, which we'll get to in a little bit. So here we are in my garage at my workbench. Underneath my workbench is a 55 gallon drum filled with water, filled to the brim. Now it just sits here. I built my workbench specifically and well, both at a height that's good for working, but I made sure I had clearance to put this under and also it's completely flush. So it sits under here. I don't think about it. I don't look at it. It's just there for in case I ever need it. 55 gallons of purified um, water that's good for drinking. I do have a little pump that can hook into it to get water out easier, uh, like a little hand pump. But honestly, it just sits there. It's got some tent pegs on top of it right now. And that is a great way to store a lot of water if you have the space for it. Obviously, I'd probably put this on a concrete slab, not on like a second floor. And that's one thing I just always keep full. If you're on city water, you could just fill it up and it's probably treated and will do all right. There's little drops you can add to it that kind of like help it stay longer and taste better longer and all of that kind of stuff. So I'll link to all that stuff down below. Definitely click those links. I love it when you click my links. It helps me out here on the channel. So water, there's, there's a few different aspects of water and a few different uses of water and not all water needs to be stored the same because you might end up using it in a variety of different ways. Water that you clean your body with, say the grid's down and you just need to get a little washcloth and kind of clean yourself off so you don't stank too much and uh, maybe you ran out of toilet paper, you need to do some stuff with water. That water doesn't necessarily need to be purified. It doesn't need to be drinking safe in order to just clean your body as long as you're not cleaning your mouth with it. Um, so you could take water from your pool, from a lake, from a pond, from a creek, from your hot tub, from rainwater, and use that just directly to water your body, assuming you know the water is relatively clean. But if the water that you have access to readily isn't clean, then you're gonna wanna filter it. There are a ton of devices that can filter water. As it pertains to preparedness and survival and all that stuff, you usually see small ones. You usually see like little backpack pump guys or sometimes the gravity fed ones, which are a lot easier to use. Sometimes a little life straw type device, which is horrible to use and you don't wanna use that long-term at home where you have space. So there's some devices that are just naturally better. Um, there's these things called Berkey filters, which are canisters, stainless steel canisters typically, and you just pour water, you could pour like nuclear reactor water into the top and there's like drinking water out the bottom. So these are devices, I'll link to some down below, that you can just set on your counter, pour your rainwater into it and trust that, you know, as long as the filter isn't clogged up and has, you know, been being used for the last 30 years, you can trust that you're gonna be able to drink that water and use it for, for cooking and drinking and whatever else you need to use it for that's gonna go into your body. Some people use Berkey's all the time. I don't. Um, I have a reverse osmosis system, like tap system at my kitchen faucet because I personally am on a well. So my well water doesn't taste great. It's not horrible, I can drink it. I just prefer not to, so it's easy for me to hook up a reverse osmosis system. So that gives me filtered water. As long as I have water that's running into my house, for instance, if I had a battery backup, like a Tesla Powerwall or something, which I do, which is awesome, which means I will realistically not really wanna run out of water because I can make my own essentially by pulling it from my well into my house 
out my reverse osmosis. So fortunately, I'm set up for that kind of stuff. Uh, but if you're not, then you want to use something like a Berkey or something like this Life Straw. So there are devices like this Life Straw. This is the mission. I haven't even opened it because I've never had a reason to use it. So I just kind of keep it for an emergency scenario in case something happens, it's the end of the world, my well pump goes out and I need to use this or I need to give it to somebody that needs it to survive. So this and this, which is the Life Straw family, are similar devices. Water goes in the top, it's actually got this kind of pre-filter and then gravity from down here to down here uh, allows it to give it enough pressure to where you just turn it on essentially and the water flows freely. I have used this just to test it out. But devices like this, there's some other ones, smaller ones from Platypus and things like that, that work as well. These Life Straw ones are a little more set up for longer term, more people using it, higher flow, easier, bigger capacity use. So one of these is worth picking up. I believe they even have like a pitcher now, like a Life Straw pitcher that works like a Brita water filter. But actually, rather than just filtering the taste like a Brita does, it actually filters out all the pathogens and everything. Again, I've said it a dozen times, but I'll link to the stuff down below. Check it out. Uh, so water filtering. If you can harvest rainwater, if you can get water from your pool, if you have a nearby creek or a lake or a pond or a puddle or whatever, you can get that water, you can pour it into one of these filters, and then you can drink it. That's awesome. If you don't have any of these, or if your budget's tight or whatever, but you have some camping gear, maybe you, maybe you watched my other uh, survival stove video where you can use the stove and all you need are twigs to basically cook food or boil water. Boiling water is one way that people have known for thousands of years, I think, probably, that you can purify water for drinking. And sorry, I, I didn't really talk about it, but if you're wondering why do you need to boil water? Why can't I just drink rainwater? Sometimes you can. Why can't I just drink creek water or lake water? Sometimes you can, but sometimes you can't <laughs> because as a lot of backpackers and survivalists know, you could be diarrheaing and puking and all kinds of bad stuff comes from drinking water that uh, is potentially contaminated, which yes, not many people know it, does include rainwater. So just be careful what you drink. Again, if it's, you know, roll the dice, you might get sick, you might not. But you do wanna filter it or you do wanna boil it. So boiling water, bring it to a rolling boil, depending on your altitude and all this stuff, boil it for a little while, a couple minutes just to make sure. And that will purify your water. Usually you wanna use a pre-filter or something like pour it through a handkerchief or a shirt or whatever to get the main big stuff out. And then you can boil it and then you can drink it. It won't do anything for the flavor of the water though, so adding something, some Zip Fizz or some Gatorade or some Kool-Aid or some Tang, if you wanna be really cool, will help you drink that water better, make it more easy to drink. So just because you have water doesn't necessarily mean you can just drink that water. So make sure you have a way to either filter it or boil it or use something else to make it drinkable like water purification tabs. But again, I'm kind of talking about like long-term home usage. So unless you have a bulk, big bulk supply of tabs, tabs are kind of a pain in the butt to use. They're more for like wilderness backpacking survival for a few days, you don't have a family, that kind of stuff. So picking up a water filter uh, is a great way to ensure that you are gonna have clean, drinkable water. All right, so we've talked about some convenient filter options, some ways to get the water, some big ways to store the water. Uh, now let's kind of talk about some more transportable ways or some ways that you can kind of store water in your home or kind of last minute, and we'll get into that. So to transition between filtering and storage is this device that does both. It looks kind of like a crazy jerry can. This is the Lifesaver jerry can. So a typical jerry can holds about five gallons of water. This holds a little bit less because it has filter elements in here and you can pressurize it. So here's a little pump. You pump it up however much you want. And then out this side is where it releases the water. So you can hook a little hose up or just get water straight from here. They have little shower attachments, all kinds of stuff. You can get them in a variety of colors. So this kind of fits your more overlanding type needs, especially if you have a jerry can holder on your bumper or something like that. This is a great device to have because it's a two-in-one thing. 
Some people that travel the globe don't know about their water sources. Maybe they're going to spend some time near creeks or rivers or lakes. Get something like this because they essentially have unlimited water. So great for overlanding, but also great thing to have around the home for a grid down scenario. This, you get water from wherever, the rain, the, a puddle, a lake. You bring it into your house and then you have filtered water all in one unit, very cool. And then there's plenty of things like this. This is a scepter water can to store and lug and carry around water. It's kind of in a convenient package. Five gallons is probably about as much as you wanna hold in each hand for any kind of long-term travel. So something like this is great. Again, loved by overlanders all around the world, but a device that can hold and store water has a nice form factor. You can stack a few of these up against a wall or whatever. This one I did drill and tap essentially a spigot into, so a brass spigot, so I could use it in a more traditional on and off water method, which is really nice for filling water bottles, washing your hands, whatever. So this again, dual purpose. You can fill it up, put it in your basement, or you can take it out overlanding, camping for the weekend. So things like these are really nice. There are cheaper devices like this. I've used it for years. This is a little Coleman five gallon jug. Similar concept, especially if you like the more cube type shape. Five gallons, I believe, or maybe six or seven, I'm not sure. But not as durable, but very light. Same idea, you can set it on its side, get water out of the spigot, and you can store water in this and carry it around if you need to. Then something like this, anybody that's worked in an office has seen this. You turn them upside down, they go on the water dispenser and you tell jokes around it in the office. But five gallons, you can fill them up at the grocery store, get them delivered or whatever. Has a handle, a lot of them. So great way to store and tuck away some water for when you need it. Now, say you don't wanna spend the money on something like that, you can just pick these up at the grocery store or gallon jugs. I like these, not particularly because I love Arrowhead or anything, but because they are stackable. So you can't stack them like 30 high or anything, but you could stack them, you know, about four high. You could go a little higher if you have some support. But this, cheap, I think they're around a dollar, maybe a little less. You can get however many you feel like getting of this, stack them up in a corner, and have water tucked away. One thing about storing bottles like this, like in your basement, if you're storing them directly on the concrete, I've heard this, I haven't done much research. I don't know if it's true or if it's not, so take it with a grain of salt. Apparently, uh, it can kind of, the bad stuff from the concrete can seep through the plastic into the water. So I usually will stack it on a piece of plywood or some cardboard boxes or something to put a little barrier of insulation between the concrete and the water, but something like this, easy to carry, you know, water is very cheap to get when it's available. Okay, so then there's another device I'll talk about. I haven't even opened this, but I've had it for probably a decade. It's called the Water Bob. Maybe the packaging has changed, but it's essentially a big giant bladder that you put in your bathtub and can fill it up. It says it holds up to a hundred gallons. So you're like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Why would I ever want something like that? If I have the water to fill it up and store it in a bathtub, I obviously have water. So here's the thing about water. Our grid is pretty fragile. That's what a lot of preppers, a lot of people that work in uh, kind of like counterterrorism type of units and stuff know that an attack on the grid uh, will mess the country up. Now, what we're going through currently doesn't affect the grid, hasn't affected the grid, fortunately, but sicknesses go around, it's very contagious, something happens, people staying at home, whatever, maybe the grid goes down, or maybe it's just a power outage or something like that that's an extended power outage. A lot of times, depending where you live, water will still flow for a while, even if the power is out in your home. If the electricity goes down, and maybe you know it's because of rioting, or maybe it's you know because a bunch of people have been sick and whatever, and you know that power might not come on for a while, you can use that opportunity to fill up a bunch of water. This device is made for that type of thing. Put it in your bathtub, 
fill it up with water, and then you have this big bladder of clean, at this point, clean water, that you can then use this little pump on here and pump that water out into, you know, a, a bottle or a cup or whatever. So the reason you would want to do that is because it's not evaporating, it's not getting contaminated when you walk in and out and dust and hair and everything getting into it. Who knows how clean your bathtub is itself. So something of that, relatively cheap, you can get it, tuck it away in your prepper closet or in the bathroom shelf, and if you need to use it, get it out, fill it up, and then bam, you have up to 100 gallons of water uh, on tap, so to speak. Now, if you don't wanna get that device, still take what I told you into your brain, tuck it away for later, and if the power goes out and you're like, man, it might not come back on for a while, fill up your bathtub, fill up some buckets of water, fill up some water bottles, fill up your sink, whatever, because you can use that water even if it gets contaminated to clean with, or you can filter it with one of the filters and drink out of it. So this water bob is just a device that makes it a little more friendly to do. Then there's those preppers that are gonna chime in, but don't forget about the 50 gallons of water you got in that hot water tank. This is true, there is in a very dire emergency need, you can usually drain your hot water heater and have water in there. Also in the tank of the toilet, not in the bowl of the toilet, unless you're a little bit crazy. In the tank of the toilet is also some water. There's all kinds of crazy reserves in like apartment complexes and facilities like that and in the home that you can kind of tap into in very, very, very dire needs. So there are other water sources available, but when you have water, you might as well use it. When water's cheap, when water storage is cheap, when you have access to it now, you might as well get some gear that can that can help you out. But again, you don't need to buy a bunch of gear. I'm not trying to sell you on anything. I'm just showing you options and hopefully educating you a little bit. If you have buckets already, use them to collect rainwater. If you have big old water bottles or water jugs, or you have like a big Kool-Aid thing because you used to work in the church refreshment thing for when you had youth group over, you could fill that thing and that thing will work great as well. So. Hopefully you enjoyed these, these options and, and a little bit of a deeper dive into kind of home type water procurement filtration storage. Yeah. A lot of people talk about water as it pertains to wilderness survival or like prepping and bug out bags and water straws and that kind of stuff. But I haven't seen a whole lot of videos talking more about home bug in type scenarios, shelter in place. So these were some options and I hope you loved it. All right guys, that was it. 20 some minutes probably of talking about water and storage and filtration. I hope it kept you entertained, maybe educated you a little bit, uh, showed you some gear that maybe you haven't seen before. Uh, yeah, hope you liked it. Hope you're doing well. Chime in down below with where you're located in the country or the world, how things are going there. I'm always curious and interested to hear kind of firsthand updates and stories about what's going on in different parts uh, of the world or the country. Uh, here in Colorado, things are pretty normal. Everything seems pretty stocked. The stores, uh, it is kind of on a lockdown, so you're not supposed to go out. And I've had a lot of questions saying, why can't you keep doing Weekender Lander videos? Why can't you keep going into the backcountry? You're not near anybody. Uh, it's a good question. You can, I think, like legally, they haven't like, I don't know. I've heard stories that people are getting ticketed out on trails. I don't know if it's true or not, but I do know that it's advised not to. Stay at home, shelter in place means literally stay at home and shelter in place unless you really need to go somewhere. So I haven't been going camping because even though the back country, the places that I usually go aren't technically shut down and gated off, they're recommending you don't go out and do that because they're trying to uh, free up emergency services uh, for those other places that need them, but also limit exposure. So if you go out into the back country and you get a flat or you get stuck, or you get injured or you start a fire, that's pulling resources uh, from all of these organizations that are either trying to limit exposure or trying to respond to uh, cases in need. So the reason that you're not going out into the backcountry, that I'm not going out into the backcountry, is to just respect everything that's going on. 
So that's just me giving a nod uh, to EMS and fire services and stuff saying, hey, I'm going to do what I can to lighten your load uh, for a couple months while this whole country is, is in shambles. So those videos will continue down the road once it's kind of advisable to go out and do that kind of stuff again. So again, just, just me doing my part. Okay, again, link to everything down below. I do have a website, llod.us, and a page there llod.us slash coupons, where I always try to keep coupons and links and stuff updated. Uh, I work with a ton of companies. A lot of them are survival related. I work with them to get you guys coupon codes. A lot of those links are affiliate links, so those help me keep on giving you free content here on YouTube. And they just kind of keep the channel going, especially through these hard times. So I do always appreciate you using my links when you think about it. Uh, and yeah, hit that like button. That always helps. Comment down below. Let me know what kind of videos or what kind of questions you have you want me to answer either in video format or down below. And I'll try to keep those in mind for videos moving forward. I'll probably kind of continue this series of preparedness type gear related stuff because I mean that's what my channel's always been but it seems more relevant makes a lot of sense in times like these so thank you so much for watching thank you for the support over the years again going to continue making videos I'll try to crank out at least one I'm, I'm going to shoot for two two or three a week in the coming forever so thanks a lot for the support and until next time guys take care stay safe